Elton John Band musical director and guitarist David Johnstone talks about hanging, playing, and just being in the presence of John Lennon. And it's everything you would have thought it would be. Now remember, Davey has a brand new album out. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can buy it. Also links to the entire interview. Usually when we release part one of an interview, the entire interview is on our sister channel, Rock History Book, and there'll be links right at the top of the description if this clip is not long enough for you and you want to hear the whole thing. So check that out. It's also a podcast. Here's Elton John's famous guitarist, Davey Johnstone. A John Lennon thing, you know, when you played with him and all of a sudden Elton calls you up and says, hey, uh, hey, John wants to hang out. And he hung out with you for hours. I know. I know. That's not the kind of thing that happens every day, is it? It's like, you know, you don't expect that. That's something you don't see every day. You know, it's one of them. Um, but yeah, what a what a memorable night. And, and uh, you know, we, we partied until got 6.30 or 7 in the morning. And just one of the all-time amazing things. And, and um you know, ironically, I was talking, I was talking, and John was such a great guitar player. See, that's something, again, people think of John Lennon. Yeah, great songs and all the rest of it, and great rhythm player. He had that fucking thing going. But, you know, John was an amazing guitar player. I mean, just really true original. Some of the parts he came up with are just incredible, you know. I mean, they're all great. The Beatles are still my they're still my heroes all the way around. And, you know, I, I've become close with, with a couple of the guys and, and Ringo's a dear friend. And um, and I was talking to him about, about John. And because, you know, I listened to the Beatles and I listened to some of John's parts uh, and George's parts, obviously. But um, I said to Ringo one day, I said, you know what? I said, John is a really, he's such an underrated guitar player. And Ringo said, not by us which I loved, you know, because it's so true. They just, you know, adored each other's work. And it was, there's parallels to the way that our band, I'm not saying we were like the Beatles. I'm saying that we were a band who, four of us, who were all pretty good at what we did and we came together and made something special. And that parallel is very important to me when I think about the Beatles, because when I, when I hear their stuff, I know, it was so honest and that was them doing their thing together. It wasn't something that was hackneyed and worked on and worked on. They had, to, you know, maybe in the last year or so of them being together, they, they got a bit crazy. That's probably why I haven't looked at um, the, the Peter Jackson documentary. I, I, I don't want to. I can't. I can't do it. No, me neither. I can't do it. I watched the first 10 uh, minutes of it and I, I just felt grief. I felt started feeling grief because I went, oh my God, I want it. I wanted, I thought I wanted to be a fly on the wall, but maybe I don't during that, you know, you were 13 and yeah. 63. Like you were yes, there. I was. You yes, were there. I was. Yeah. 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 Oh man. It was the whole thing was amazing to see that happening. And, and I used to spend a lot of time near Liverpool all the way through my childhood because uh, one of my mom's sisters, my auntie Joyce lived in Southport, I like a kind of vacation place, uh, maybe 30 minutes from Liverpool. And um, when I got to be, you know, like 10 or 11, I realized this was close to where the Beatles lived. But when I got to be 15, me and my buddy, hitchhiked from Edinburgh where I lived in Scotland to Liverpool which took us about 10 hours of why how they did that I have no idea but we did and we made our way from Southport in Lancashire uh, on the train through to Liverpool and staying with my auntie would come back every every night uh, and I that's actually a real springboard from my career because I met some people um, who knew about you know the, the early days of the Beatles and the Cavern and those places and to this day Liverpool is a very, very special place to my heart. It really is. And um, I love the, the soccer team. You know, Liverpool are one of my favourite teams. And, um, and you know, it just it means a lot to me. And also one of my dearest friends is a playwright uh, called Willie Russell. And he wrote um, Educating Rita and Shirley Valentine. It's a wonderful, uh, really earthy things, you know, basically that are set in Liverpool, uh, you know, and... and a, and abroad, uh, but yeah, I, I love Liverpool to this day. I'm, I'm I'm a huge Beatle fan, as you can gather from this chat. Do you did you get a chance to that trip? I'm kind of curious. Two things: did you get a chance to tell any of the guys, especially John, about that trip because that's such a point a point of interest thing? I, I really did. I, and here's we check this out. 
I was telling him about this, like we did this, and I'd go to, to Southport every year. And he went, well, that's weird. He said, I used to go to Edinburgh every year for me vacation. So his people, his aunt, his aunt took him to Edinburgh. Where, and I found out, I said, where did you live? And he told me, and I went, Jesus Christ, that's like a mile from where I grew up in Scotland. So who knew? When he was a kid, he would come to live to Edinburgh in Scotland, which is my hometown. Um, maybe Obviously, he was 10 years older than me or whatever it was, 11 years older. I'm not sure um, in those days. But um, how weird is that? So I told him and, and we would we swap stories about and He loved Edinburgh and loved Scotland in general. And uh, so that was a weird one, too. You know, from what you'd said about John, I remember you you'd reached out to them when they were recording a double fantasy, but they were just right in the middle of the whole thing. But my, 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 every time I hear you talking about John, I kept going, I get a strong feeling and no one knows what's in the future. You guys would have been very, very, very close as, right. uh, you know, because I mean, you seem to have a, a connection with them. Did you, what was the thing that surprised, did he say anything as you were getting to know him a little bit there? Was there something, what was the biggest surprise of, of David Johnstone and John Lennon hanging together? What was the biggest surprise? I think, um, well, probably when we were recording, we were, we were doing a version of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And I'd come up with, uh, probably a year before, I'd mess around with the guitar. Uh, and I came up with this very cool version of, of Lucy, the intro part, uh, on the guitar. And Elton always said, oh, that's, that's great. We've got to do that one day. So when John came up to Caribou Ranch, it was like, let's do Lucy in the Sky. So I was doing the riff and coming up with the ideas. And obviously... I said, well, John, you know, you got to play on this. And he went, but I don't have me guitar. You know, I said, okay, well, I'll take one of mine, please. So I gave him one. Of, I gave him my gold top Les Paul. And, and he said, well, you got to tell me what to play. You're the guitar player. This is John Lennon saying that to me. And I said, John, you wrote the song. So just play what you want on it. I don't really care. Uh, and actually he came up with a great part. Uh, and he came up with a reggae section that we did in, in the middle of that song. And uh, so that was surprising to me because he was so basically, well, you're the guitar player, you do that. And I'm, and I'm thinking, John Lennon just said that to me. And, and you know, it, he was so modest about his own playing. I think that's one of the most beautiful things. Uh, I think, that, you know, that was probably the most surprising thing. I expected him to be extremely... Um, cynical, sarcastic, maybe a bit intimidating because of the stuff you hear and maybe interviews you saw. But he couldn't have been more welcoming and more friendly and just a really down-to-earth nice person. I think that was the coolest thing about it. We'll have another clip from David Johnstone in a few days. Remember, if you want to hear the entire interview, it is on our sister channel, Rock History Book. And this is also a podcast. There'll be a link to it in the description of this video and a link for you to buy Davey's brand new album. Make sure you comment on our videos. We love, we read all the comments. Buy a t-shirt, you can help support the channel. And remember, subscribe to the channel. It makes us very happy. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take good care of yourself.